the kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us all trespasses, and forgive us all trespasses, and forgive us and forgive us all trespasses, and forgive us all trespasses, and forgive us all Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Lord, 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 Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Lord, 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 pray for us in the name of the Lord of all the things. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord of all the things. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord of all the things. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord of all the things. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord of all the things. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord of all the things. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord of all the things. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord of all the things. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord of all the things. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in the name of the Lord of all the things. Full praise the fruits of the blessed art thou among the women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Blessed are thou among the women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Blessed are thou among the women, and blessed is the God, pray for us in us now under the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in us now. Lord, Son of the Holy Spirit, in the beginning is now, but we will be born without you. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, forgive us all. In the voice of the last words to him, his perfect was the most need of your mercy. Send your sons, pray again, and give these endless time in your tears. But I have an illustration of their behaviors of findings, which are seen to all of us. And that I have a particular in my hands, should you go up to the Supreme Shrine of Jesus, for the heavens are looking for sweet Virgin Mary. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Susan, will you give us a starting opening prayer for us, sister, please? Sure, brother. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you 
Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. Holy Spirit, we adore you. Father, we thank you for giving us Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for making today's teaching so simple and easy for us to understand and giving us plenty of practical examples and teaching us how to apply this word that we learned today, Lord, and so that we can share it with the people that we meet. Lord, we believe that you've heard our prayer and answered it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Have any time in our life, um, have any time in your life, have you ever felt broken? <laughs> really, truly? You may be asking, Amal, are you all right? <laughs> I hope I am. Um, have you ever, when when did you feel broken? No. 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 Yeah. Okay. Can you give me an instance? If it's not too personal, if you can. I I saw them. You know, it's like you know, God is there, and and, and um, things haven't changed. You know, you you know where they are, and and some of it might even seem what. Worse, worse than ever, but it's just the trials coming again, you know, can, can, can break you down. And the trials are coming again and again that will broke you down. It's worse than worse. Okay. Really what worse like I was worse. it's not moving, you know, it's still sticking my ground and where it was coming and all that, but it's just too uh... mm -hmm. All right. And I suppose you would have you it's it's just the mental everything, it's just it's hard, you know. Okay. When something comes to the surface, that's terrible news, and it's the fierce darkness, the thrust even that comes to the surface, it is a miracle that it has been revealed. Okay, so, so terrible is horrific. It's horrific. When it comes to the surface, it feels horrific. Okay. Predominantly, if I say, when you say brokenness, yes. power, yes, when you... You can, do nothing. you can do nothing. You feel powerlessness. You're just so, so sad. So sad. Okay. I'm so sad you asked Jesus to take you off this world and off the heaven. Well, I think it's not. All right. It's not fair. It's not going to be possible. It's actually your energy is gone. Like, but if we see the scenarios that will cause us brokenness, is either loss of our loved ones. Yes, predominantly, and loss or any big of financial loss or any catastrophic news you hear regarding your dear friends. Yes? The loss of your future. Like the loss of your future. Say, for example, in the people who have no future, trying to find a future. Yes. Yes. If you broadly put it into nutshell, or your children are not doing well, you feel desperate, you feel broken, you keep praying, but you feel broken inside. And that is what the Lord was teaching me throughout this week. How our brokenness can be converted into a blessing. Many of times I could see people looking at me, Amal, hope you're all right after your night duty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you talking in the right sense? <laughs> true, true it is. And this is what the teaching, the Spirit of the Lord made me to understand how my brokenness can be a blessing to others. And also it's a blessing internalizing myself as well. Okay. But sorry, man, before you, like, 
being broken, but we don't want to be broken. I don't want to be broken. Either. We don't want to be broken, yeah. but as as Sheila was saying, as Margaret was saying, sometimes when it is repeated, repeatedly coming in, the human emotions part go into get into the play, and they find it themselves under this desperation of brokenness. But here the Lord is teach. Uh, yeah, I'm so I was just going to say no. You're going to say okay now. Let's see if, through the through the life of a beautiful saint, Saint Anne Seton. Have you heard of her? Okay. Sister Susan, could you please put her on the her life history, sister, please? Sure, brother. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Elizabeth Ann Bailey Satan. Born, was a Catholic religious sister in the United States and an educator known as a founder of the country's parochial school system. Born in New York and reared as a Episcopalian, she married and had five children with her husband, William Sitton. Two years after his death, she converted to Catholicism in 1805. She established the first Catholic girls' school in the nation in Maryland. There, she also founded the first American congregation of religious sisters, the Sisters of Charity. After her death, <clears throat> after her death, she was the first person born in what would become the United States to be canonized by the Catholic Church. Okay, we'll go into the brief history of her. This is what she has done. But if we go through the life history, <clears throat> it is something phenomenal. She was born in August, the second child of a socially prominent couple. And her father is a surgeon and his wife, and his wife, Catherine. The Bailey and Charlotte families were among the earliest European settlers in the New York area. Her father's parents were of French and English descent and lived in New Rochelle, New York. Numerous Huguenots had emigrated to North America in the late 17th and the early 18th century at a time of religious persecution in France. And I think there's a time of the French, French Revolution as well. As the chief health officer of the Port of New York, her father attended to immigrants disembarking from ships at the Staten Island. He also cared for the New Yorkers when yellow fever swept through the city. Bailey later served as the first professor of anatomy at Columbia College. In fact, in short, her parents were quite well off. Imagining of the socio-economic situations in that particular time of 19th, 17th and 18th century, they are quite well off. Then, her mother Catherine died in 1977 when Elizabeth was 30 years old. Possibly 30 or 3. You are not able to read, is it? No, we can't. Oh, sorry, you should have told me. Right. Okay. That is a too small for you, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Sister Susan, could you please make it a bit more bigger for the screen, sister, please? Yeah, right. Thank you. Can you? Thank you. Thank you, sister. Yes, sir. And we can come to the live, sister, please. 
Yeah, yeah, her mother. Her mother, Catherine, died in 17, 1777 when Elizabeth was only three years old, possibly due to the complication of the birth of her namesake daughter, Catherine. The infant died early the following year. Elizabeth's father married Charlotte, a member of the J Jacobus family, Jacobus James family to provide a mother for his two surviving daughters. The newly Mrs. Bailey participated in her church social ministry and often took young Elizabeth with her on charitable rounds. They visited the poor in their homes to distribute food and needed, and needed items. The couple had five children, but the marriage ended in separation. During the breakup, their stepmother rejected Elizabeth and her older sister. When their father traveled to London for further medical studies, the sisters lived temporarily in New Rochelle with their parental uncle, William Bailey, and his wife, Sarah. Elizabeth endured time of joy, glee, happiness in their affectionate care of her aunt and uncle. Is it? Yeah. Elizabeth endured a time of darkness, grieving the absence of the second mother, as she later reflected in her journals. We'll go for this, sister. On January 25th, 19, 1794, at the age of 19, Elizabeth married William Maggie Satan. How do you come? Satan, is it? S-E-T-1. Satan. Age, a wealthy businessman in the import trade. Samuel, the first Episcopal Bishop of New York, presided at their wedding. Her father, William, belonged to an improvised noble Scottish family. He had immigrated to New York in 1758 and became a superintendent and part owner of the Iron Box. A loyalist, the senior William, was the last royal public notary for the city and the province of New York. He brought his sons and James into the import-export mer mercantile firm, the William Company, which became Seton, and the younger William and had importing counting houses in e Europe in 1788. Now, shortly, we'll, we'll go for the marriage and family system. Shortly after married, Elizabeth and William moved into the fashionable residence on Wall Street, a very pro a very posh area. Socially prominent in New York society, the Satans belonged to Trinity, Trinity Episcopal Church near Broadway and Wall Streets. A devout communicant, Elizabeth took John Henry Hobart as a spiritual director along with her sister-in-law, Rebecca Mary. Elizabeth continued former stepmother's social ministry, nursing the sick and dying among the family, friends, and needy. When, elder, when the elder William Satan died, the Satan family fortunes waned during the volatile economic climate, climate preceding the War of 1812, when the U.S. boycotted trade with Great Britain. The couple took in William's six younger siblings, ages 7 to 17. The couple already had their own five children. The much expanded family required a move to a large and family residence. Dispute between the United States of America and French Republic from 1798 to 1800 led to a series of attacks on American shipping. We go up, sister, please. Thank you. The United Kingdom's blockade of France and loss of several of certain ships at C, resulting in William having to declare bankruptcy. The Satans lost their home at 61 Stone Street in Lower Manhattan. Following summer, Elizabeth and the children stayed with their father, who was still the health officer of the Port of New York on the Staten Island. From 1801 to 1803, they lived in a house at 8 State Street, this site is now occupied by the Church of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary. Through most of their married life, William suffered from tuberculosis 
the stress worsened his illness. His daughters, his doctors sent him to Italy for the warmer climate with Elizabeth and their eldest daughter as their his companions. Upon landing on the port of Legon, they were held in quarantine for a month as authorities feared they might have brought yellow fever from New York. William died there on December 27, 1803. He was buried. Elizabeth and her daughter Anna Maria was received by the families of her late husband's Italian business partners, Filippo and Antonio Felici, who introduced her to Catholicism. After returning to New York, Widow Seton was received into Catholic Church by Father Matthew O'Brien of St. Peter's Church, the city's only Catholic Church. A year later, she received the Sacrament of Confirmation from the Bishop of Baltimore, John Carroll, the only Catholic bishop in the nation. To support herself and the, her children, Satan started an academy of young ladies, as was a common for widows of social standing in that period. After news of her conversion to Catholicism spread, most parents withdrew their daughters from her school. In 1807, students attending a local Protestant academy were boarded at her house on nearby St. Mark's Church. Satan was about to move to Quebec, Canada, which have few numerous French-speaking Catholics, when she met a visiting priest. He was a member of the French immigration community in the Sulpician fa Fathers and then president of Baltimore. Founder. Okay. Now she founded, if you go further, she founded a new religious community school, the first Catholic community school in the United States. Now the question for this today, which, need, which we need to ask is, she lost her mother at the age of three. Would she be heartbroken? Yes. Would the young child has a very good childhood? Now, the second mother took her on board, going on very well. But when the divorce separation took place between her father and the stepmother, the stepmother pushed away these two girls. How would that be? Heartbroken? Okay. Then, she married. When she grew up, she married. And she thought her life will be going on well. She was in a very affluent place. And that is the time because of the problem between America and France. Their ship was attacked and their business collapsed. Meanwhile, her husband was ailing with tuberculosis. In those days, tuberculosis does not have a treatment, as we have today. So in order to bring his life back, the doctors advised her husband to be taken to Italy. But as we read, on arrival on Italy, with all the hardships, her husband died. And there is a lot there inside. From her husband died, and then she was finding it very hard to find a ticket to buy for herself and her only daughter to return back to New York. She finds it very hard even to buy a ticket. It's not here, but if you go to the history, it is there. And this, this um, local family who adopted them, helped them, and there, by that love, she got into the identity of the Catholic Church, and she was readily willing to accept the Catholicism. Now, her own daughter could not pursue any studies. She was finding it hard to buy a ticket to travel back from Italy to America. Such was her poverty. But she landed, when she landed back in New York, she wanted to give what her child did not get. She wanted to give the children 
an education which her own child were unable to provide for. Slowly but surely, the Lord begins to work through her and by the regular hard work and the work of the Lord, she was, she was the first one who made the first Catholic school in U.S. And they continued to do that job. Now the question is, was she heartbroken after her, after her husband's loss? When she was at a loss with her daughter's education is not met, how would that be seen by a mother? Did you see anything good and glean in her life? One after the other, there was trials after trials. And a heartbroken lady, but she never ever looked into the hardships, but always looked up. One question here is, if you and I would have been there, we would have focused more on the happenings around us. My mother died. My stepmother rejected me. Rejection. Already I'm going through a grief for my mother. On top of it, my stepmother rejection. And then again, she thought at least if I get married, I'll be settled in life. Her husband got sick. And the business then collapsed. They have to sell their affluent home. Financial loss. And then her own, the only eldest daughter whom she traveled with, Anna Maria, her education could not be provided for. Every In every of this adversity, her focus was on how this can be avoided to others. How such young children who cannot pursue studies, I can be a person who can give them an education. So here the lesson the church is teaching today through Saint Annis, when we are into brokenness, where is our focus on? She, she did not look into her daughter, but she looked into the so many other daughters of many mothers who could not offer for education. Hello? So it's the world who, you have to say, it's the world who has orders. We, we are coming there. We are coming. Mm -hmm. So, the more the focus, what brokenness brings is, we begin to look into ourselves. Why is it only me? Why this is happening? But how this brokenness can be converted into a blessing is when we begin to look into others. We'll go through scripture as well, having learned the saint's life. Sister Willie, Sister Federer, do you want me to share the screen or can, can you, Sister? I can, brother. Please go. Okay. Give me Exodus chapter 2, verse number maybe 12 onwards. Exodus 11, 2, 11. One day after Moses have grown up, he went out to his people and saw their forced labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own kinsfolk. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When he went out the next day, he saw the two Hebrews fighting, and he said to the one who was in the wrong, why do you strike your fellow Hebrew? He answered, Who made you the ruler and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. Who made you the ruler and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you, as you kill the Egyptian? 
Then Moses was afraid and thought, surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh. He settled in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. We'll hold on here a second. One second. Now let us come to the life of Moses. Was he in a palace? In Pharaoh's palace? Mm -hmm. He was. Okay. Life is beautiful. Pretty good. Enjoying every luxuries of his life. Mary? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's fine. Will you excuse me for one minute, please? That's my practice. Fine. <clears throat> Was he in a very affluent family, in a Pharaoh family? Now he was afraid and he has to run for his life. Thus he has to move away from all his loved ones. Does his, does his future is in a jeopardy? He doesn't know where to go. There's nobody there. He is in a no man's land. At least, when the Lord brought me to Ireland, he brought me with an employment contract. Does it make sense? But when Moses left, he doesn't have a contract. He doesn't know where is he going to. He doesn't know who, where will I get a job? How am I going to live my life? His future is under a question mark. One thing, loss, he has to move away from all, her loved, all his loved ones. Number two, his future is totally under a question mark. If you and I would have been like this, what would be our condition? Desperate? Heartbroken? Stressful? Let's see what Moses did. Now he is sitting. He settled in the land of Median and sat down by a so that means it is fresh. He just came into the land of Median and sitting by a well side, obviously thinking about what to do next. Will I get a meal? Will I get a job? Will I get a roof over me to sleep? What to do next? Don't know. At that time, if you and I would have been there sitting at that edge of the well, what would have been the thought that might have been going through into our hearts? What am I going to do? Okay. I'm in big trouble, deep trouble. Mm -hmm. Why me? Why me? Good man. But let's see what he did. The priests of Median had seven daughters. They came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. But some shepherds came and drove them away. Moses turned aside and he begins to sleep. And he ran away from there because they were quarreling. And Moses said to himself, I myself is very down in my heart. And it's a foreign land. I don't want any trouble. I'm already troubled within myself. So leave me alone. Did he? Mm -hmm. But some shepherds and more some shepherds came and drove them away. Moses got. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Sister, will you please mark it? Moses got up. Very, very important thing. The Spirit of the Lord is revealing at this moment. When you and I are seated at that side of this brokenness in every part of our life, we remain to be seated. We remain to be seated in that brokenness, in the chair of brokenness. We remain tend to be feeling more comfortable by making us to feel more broken into brokenness. 
What did you say slowly, Sheila? I'll repeat it. What did you say? To be easier to lie in the bed and stay there and God, you do it all. Oh, fantastic. I get you now. Sorry? You have to get up. Now, this is the thing. He was sitting, like in the rivers of Babylon, when all these people were in exile, they were thinking of what their life in Jerusalem. Same way, he was sitting down in the well side, thinking about all his future being in jeopardy. What am I going to do next? Nobody there for me. Who will be employ me? How am I going to feed my tummy? Obviously, he would have been hungry. Because having traveled that far distance, because he has to get out of Egypt. Away from, to escape the clutches of the Pharaoh. But Moses got up. He got up because he saw a trouble for others in front of him happening, right? So when we go through events of brokenness in our life, can we be able to see others' brokenness in some situations? Can we? Really? Good. If that is the case, then we are getting up like Moses. That's the first step. Next step, he came to their defense. First thing is noticing the problem for in others. After noticing, you are getting up from that comfort chair, which you, as Sheila said, better to lie in bed. No, 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 no. Get up. And you, he begins to work on the problems happening to that neighbor in front of his eyes. He goes to them and in their defense. Would Moses be weak having traveled all the journey? Because in that, in just in the afternoon, he had bacon and cabbage. <laughs> Did he? Or was he... Empty stomach. Empty stomach. Was all the odds were against Moses. Heart-wise is heavily, heavily broken. Physic-wise tired. No food in the belly. If you see, every circumstances was negative inside Moses. But when he saw something happening, problem in others, he saw first, he got up next, then he walked in the presence of the trouble to their defense. Yes? Next, the most important thing, he watered their flock. He did not only drove them, but he watered the flock. He himself needed to water his own body starving, but he watered the flock of those girls, thinking that they will pay him money. Did he? No. 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 Oh, good. Okay. And the girls paid him a hundred euros to him. No. So always, whenever we are broken, this is the step the Holy Spirit is saying. Can you and I perceive or see some trouble happening in others in their life? Number two, am I ready to get up of this self-pity thought of brokenness? Yes, yes, it is brokenness. But can you get out of it? Good. And then came in the scene to help those people. How? If that people, if that person is starving, can you get me, get them a sandwich or some provisions? Yeah. Or if they are jobless, if you know somebody of your friend who is managing a, a, a stationery store, 
Can he get them a job to lead their family? That's our watering the flock. Yeah, just the problem. Coming back to your home. I'm coming there. Yes, and Satan also has to come back to your own home. Saint Anne also has to come and see her own daughter who is not educated. But the joy was bubbling inside her heart. The more, the more she's doing, Lord begins to fill this joy inside her heart. Mind it, Moses was sitting at the well. Yeah, just leave home. Not leave home. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Leave home during the day. Come back. Because your first mission starts from home. So you need to. Yeah. Come in here. Come in here. No, no, no. For the mic. For the mic. That, that's fine. So I'm talking. Sister, can you hear? I'm talking. I'm talking. No, brother. No, no, that's well. They are all interested in stories like you. I know it's a modern day version of this story, but there's no happy ending just yet. So I was walking along on the Pulpit Street during the week, and there was a homeless man, and I gave him two euro, and I got talking to him, and I said, "Where are you from?" And he said, "Bosnia." And I said, "Oh, our lady Medjugorje was in Bosnia, and he had heard of her." Um, I didn't ask him anymore whether he was a Christian or another religion. So um, he told me that he came to Ireland because his friend told him there was loads of work here, but he hadn't got anything. And now he is unemployed and he doesn't have anywhere to live. And he's sleeping outside of Dunn's um, on Patrick Street. And he's begging them on somewhere along the streets of Cork. And he, I, he said all he wants to do is go home and he can't afford the airfare home. So I didn't know what to say, and I kind of thought to myself, look, technically I'm working here. I could buy that air ticket for him, but I'm not going to do anything just right now. So I said to him, are you here every day? And he said, yeah, and he told me the spot. So I said oh, to myself, I'm going to go away now and think about this because I'm not quite sure whether A, his story is genuine. So I went back to the office and I told one of the lads at work, and he said, well, he said, I'm not sure that story stacks up. Well, one, why did he come here? He's not an EU citizen, so it wouldn't be easy for him to work here. Two, why isn't he living with his friend now? He said, three, there may be more to this than meets the eye, which, of course, there probably is, but, like, there's more to every story. Mm -hmm. um, and I looked up the price of a ticket back. Like, it's you'd either fly to Dubrovnik or Sarajevo, and if you were prepared to wait, like, we'd say six weeks or six, like, it costs a lot of money to go next week, so... But if you were prepared to wait maybe five, six, eight weeks, you could get there for under 100 euro. And I said to myself, OK, I could afford to send this man back. There's no doubt about that. I could buy him an Ryanair voucher mm -hmm. and I could afford to, to send him back. And I mentioned that to my friend at work and he said, yeah, he said, you have to be careful there. You know, you don't really know if his story is genuine. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, the conclusion was I said to myself, I'm going to go in and pray about this because, you know, I have to be. I'm not quite sure is the story genuine. Mm. Can he afford to wait eight weeks? What's he going to do in the meantime? Yes, I could afford to send him. I'm not saying I'm loaded, but like, mm. you know, you yeah. could afford to send somebody for less than 100 euro. That's mm. not an expensive yeah. airfare. Um, so I'm just kind of bringing it up really to kind of go, if I had taken the Moses approach, I would have just taken a leap of faith and said I'd help yeah. him. Well, I wouldn't have given him the cash because he, he wouldn't have been able to hold that cash for the purpose intended, he would have had to spend it on food and whatever. Yeah. So I'll, I'm just saying to the group here that there are modern examples of Moses' story, and it's very hard. Like you always think, yeah, of course I'll do the right thing. But I'll come to you. The thank you for sharing this. Yeah. Thank you. I'll continue with another one happening. Somebody contacted me a couple of months ago, and this person is sending money to a particular country, to a particular priest. And I was asked that whether this money is being spent in a very, what do you say? Is the money just, to, just is the money utilized for the purpose it is being sent? I was asked. So having known few people there, 
asked and I know about the work of this priest and everything. And then further, we did not know much because he is educating some people to become priesthood and he is in the seminary doing few bits and pieces. And during that time, I, I forgot it after inquiring with my known people. And I forgot to reply to be, this person who asked me. And that is a time my maternal uncle and he told me when I asked about this incident, he told me, Amal, when you and I are giving in good faith, is that person giving it to the priest or is she giving to the Lord? Given to the Lord. So her box stops there. When you have given something in good faith to the Lord, that's over. And whatever that person does with it, he is accountable to God. And we don't need to be very concerned about what they are doing or not. I gave him the money and then he said, where is the train station? So then he didn't know where the train station was. So I said, where are you going? So he said, Mano. And I happened to be going to Mano. So I said, I can actually bring you to Mano. I said, see, he doesn't know where. The same guy was in the A&E. I couldn't walk to head for my head to wait. But then he waited all night with me. I brought him to Mano. He didn't want to kiss the euro. He said, where my money? He wanted to check the phrase of someone in the city. And he just wanted to get out there and get home. Amen. So you are the good Samaritan that day? No, I had many Samaritan days as the morning, but he actually never wanted my money. He just wanted to get Safely me. out yeah. of the city. Safety. And he was also heartbroken, afraid of his life. Mm. How would be that situation then? So if you see today, the Holy Spirit is giving us so many practical examples. When So in our brokenness, are we seeing the brokenness in others. When we could able to see the brokenness in others, that brokenness becomes a blessing. Okay. Sister, give me... Uh, okay. When they returned to their father, Raul, he said, how is that you have come back so soon today? So it was a regular happening for the girls. They said an Egyptian helped us against the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And he said to his daughters, Where is he? Why did you leave the man? Invite him to break bread. Moses agreed to stay with the man and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah in his marriage. Imagine a man who came to a land who knows nobody, whose future is totally in a big question mark, because he could able to see the brokenness in others, now his life is settled. We repeat it again in the life of St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Did she see the brokenness in others? Yeah. Did God give her a wonderful name? We call her saint today. Yes. So again, this is another an example. When we are in brokenness, the enemy makes us to feel into the comfort zone of self-pity. Yeah, what a pity in Cox City is right here. <laughs> and the self-pity is the biggest enemy to we need to get up like Moses from that. All right. This will give me the multiplication of the five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish, sister, please. So by right, we shouldn't be saying, I'm tired, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. We, we can't say anything about it. Just, just to get exactly how you said it. Then, so. I'm coming there. Yes, you're right. You're right, and that's where we have to. 
those who wants to follow me first thing is sister give me that version sister i'll come back here sister do never look into your own self okay. that's why i say if you do take whatever catching and we we the fifteen more taking 18 that's fine so just give me yeah those who want to follow me must deny themselves <clears throat> ah the formula is here jesus told his followers or disciples followers believers or disciples that this the question mark comes in am i a follower or am i a disciple well at time and again i have told that a follower is a one okay fine a follower is a one you you see in the bible millions of crowds followed him right but only the lady with the toilets of bleeding got touched and jesus is asking who touched me and the disciples were saying Lord, what are you asking about? But it is only here she got healed. There was five thousand men ate up to their full belly. And how many followed Jesus? Only the twelve baskets. Though they are all called followers, they follow wherever a miracle is happening and enjoying it. but they never think when my life is going to be a miracle to others followers among the followers few becomes if there are 100 of followers 10 will become believers in believers when they begin to believe more you see all the evangelical gifts of the holy spirit as you see in the mark 16 17 18 and 19 they will speak in new tongues they will catch Uh, they can drink deadly poison nothing will harm them they they will lay their hand on the sick and they will die do they no they oh, they recover so all these miracles signs and wonders but in this life in the life of a believer as you said when trials and tribulations comes in example something happened to their child immediately they begin to ask the lord lord through me so much miracles and everything's are happening how come this can happen to me what you would not ask you would i would you would do that to god like this that is the life of a believer among the 10 believers five will become a disciple in that discipleship of a person in such instances they won't be wobbly they never they take it on board but they never ever allow their faith to be shaken it's not the faith it's it's yourself it's it's your your energy your tired your they don't allow it st paul was beaten that's it st paul said st paul was beaten five times but the very next day he was in the synagogue so he is at your fall you're all tired you just keep that's where the discipleship comes into play no matter what happens for me my lord is important whatever his work first and foremost seek the kingdom will be perfectly established in a discipleship level example now our lady when she when jesus was born does she has to take all the way to egypt how was the journey to egypt through a desert what would be the day temperature 35 god bless you easily it will be nearing 50 night time sub zero hard did she look into her hardship or to bring jesus into salvation for the mankind what should i suppose that somebody just walking you know this happens if people bully it and they keep facing to walk again and again and again are in charge in the school yard or whatever and this is this is being done every single day you know to them it's very very difficult okay i'll give you one example in one of my friends place he in india he was working in a in a in a in a, in a place where one person made a complaint about him 
falsely. An investigation was going on. Meanwhile, there came evidences against the same person who complained that this person is not right. But my friend refused to put the complaint on that person. He said, I'm not here to judge. Let God be the judge. I leave it to God. And the, and the, and the, and the management hierarchy were telling, if you put in a complaint, we will surely we will be able to take an action on that person. But he refused on only one thing. My God was mercy to me. I want to be merciful. And when, all, when he said to me, when all the friends encouraged him to at least to let the person be known that it is out of mercy, this person is being exempted. If not, uh, that person's life is going to be seriously troubled in, in her employment. My friend said, no. Why? Let God reveal because of his mercy, he revealed. He will reveal one day. It's not me. To be. Things are happening. He could able to see what can happen. And that my friend was looking into how God was merciful. So it is my, my default nature that I need to forgive them. Why? St. Paul says we have the mind of. If I have the mind of Christ, I should be able to do exactly what Christ did it for me. When we went to the sacrament of reconciliation, did Christ put any conditions? Did he put any preconditions? Olivia, you have to do A, B and C. Only then I will forgive your sins, did he? What about others then? Well, I suppose it just kind of all goes back to the love of God. It just gets falling out of you. Then you can't, you're going to try to say it to them. So it's to keep up that love of God and that God's love is in, in, in you when you're acting through that. Exactly. The very nature, when you begin to rely on yourself, the word tiredness will come. Huh? When I, you and I begin to put into myself first, tiredness, aloofness, hopelessness, brokenness, all this unneededness will be added. But when you and I begin to, if you want to be my disciples, he said, he told that to his disciple, not to his followers. Not to his believers, but he said to his disciples, he said to him, if anyone want to become my followers, let them. I'm not tired anymore. Good girl. But there's nothing wrong with me. Um, myself, for me, if I'm tired and if I'm fatigued and if I, if I meant to not, um, I'm still doing it. Mm. I'm still participating. And you're still going out and doing it. Um, what you're meant to be doing. Sister, I'm muting myself for a moment, okay? Um, they were very, uh, it was very abusive. And it was in um, the Southern Network section. But I chose to be your father. And I was pregnant. And our Lord went into the room. And there was the other people to call. And he did walk out. But I find on a personal level, at home, if I counted, if I focused on that, I wouldn't have been protected at all. I wouldn't have learned. But Amen. The, the fatigue, I accept the fatigue in me for a reason, but the tired, it's the, it's the despair. Can I talk now? Yes. One second. <laughs> Sister, I, I'm muting myself for a moment.
It is not saying acting. Moses got up, but he did not only got up. He went into the tackle and he begins to help them in a way that will help them. Ah, so when you and I begin to deny themselves, that is where I deny that brokenness which the enemy is trying to distract me. For Saint Anne, the enemy was distracting her with all the negativities. A poor lady she was. And through her, Lord enabled the first Catholic church to be built in America. Imagine. Okay. And then the Lord said, denying is okay. She's denying my tiredness. And that's what I said. When you become tired, it becomes I'm focused on myself. And my capacity, my willpower, my intellect. And the second criteria is take up the bed of roses, is it? Take up. Take up the cross. There will be situations. But even in that situation, am I able to follow him is the criteria. When I am broken, I feel like sitting down. I feel like falling down with the pressure of my brokenness. But with that, am I able to follow Christ? That means, am I able to love my neighbor as, as I love myself? That's what Moses did. That's what St. Anne did. That's what St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta did. Praise the Lord. And that is where the, the classical example of how this brokenness will become a blessing. St. Anne's brokenness have become a blessing to all those children who were downtrodden, who could not offer education, making their future to be bright. Her brokenness made it. Moses' brokenness made him to be a blessing in the future because it is a desert area. So he was, he was practiced in the desert for 40 years and then the Lord called him to be a blessing for the whole race of Israel to make them to leave Egypt to the promised land. Amen. Okay, take into the life of Joseph. We have time and again we have taken his life in the Old Testament. Was he rejected by his own brothers? Would it be heartbroken? Was he falsely accused by Pharaoh's wife? And thrown into, into the prison? Yes. Would, would, it, would he be heartbroken? And the person whom he helped inside the prison, did they remember him? No. Would he be heartbroken? But in all these things, where was his focus? His brokenness became a blessing to Egypt. It's a biblical truth. It will fit everywhere. Sister, give me that feeling of 5,000, sister, please. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds, crowds, Sheila, crowds, followers, followers Heard it, and they followed him on foot from the town. <clears throat> when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was in the evening, disciples came to him and said to him, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing but five loaves and two fishes. He said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking five loaves and two fish, he looked, he looked, Mm 
he looked up to his father, right? Now, perhaps this five pieces of bread and two pieces of fish would have been their supper for the time, for the disciples and for Jesus. He is sacrificing that. In the other, in the other version of the testament, when he fed the four thousand sister, you will give me that one. Andrew said, Philip and Andrew said, "How are we going to feed them?" And when Andrew came and told that a boy has just loaves of bread and fish. No, sister. No. no, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah. Thank you. One of his disciples, Andrew and Simon. No, um, seventh verse, sister, please. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what... Are they among so many people? So who supplied this raw material? Five barley loaves and two fish. A boy. He's not even a man. Bible says he's a... Would he be heartbroken? Possibly would. Possibly would. Would you be able to get a chocolate out of a child's hand now? Something like that the other day. Would he be heartbroken? But his brokenness was the biggest blessing. But conditions apply. His brokenness was given to Jesus. His five barley loaves and two, thank you, Holy Spirit. His five barley loaves and two fishes were given to the hands of Jesus. By doing that, God will replenish your energy. He has already has the power is inside of you that you are able to tap it easily. It is not God is going to give you power. The power is already given to you and me, but we will be able to tap it. That's the source. Do this, yet has... Do you have water under this area? Yes. But you need to drill it. Tap it. Same way, the power of God has been inside of you and me. So we should be always full of energy. So we should keep the I told you just a couple of minutes ago. I know. I'm trying to tell myself. All right. And then he, Jesus said, but what are they among? And then he said, Make the people sit down. And now there was a great deal of grass in the place. So they sat down. Only 5,000. Again, Jesus took the loaves when he had given thanks to his father. If you see that, it is always looking up to his father. But when we are broken, is our gaze looking about to God the father in heaven? Or our gaze is fixed on person A, person B, situation A, situation B. Well, we're not giving God our full self in order for sure. Only when we completely give in to him, he will act. Brokenness comes. Yeah. But I, I, I see the way, way I think of the story. I'm not able to, I, it, it's man. But I mean, when I'm living the day, I'm fine. But the story is still, it doesn't mean that there's something done. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because in, in, Anne, in, in St. Anne's place, her, her husband did not get cured. And she was struggling to find ends meet. And she was finding it hard to get a ticket back to New York. You can refer. Well, I find for myself a little natural. I'm not on 24 or able to be perfect. It's been working. God is still doing it. Yes, God. Okay, I'll give you that. 
can just transform into this situation where okay, anything, the ending um, drama that I have going on inside my head. Okay. Because I'm asking. Sister, give me Catechism of the Catholic Church, Article 1769, please. I um, I got terrible news that the Protestant Mass I had been inside St. Augustine's and I had or nearly got me over to her to tell me to remind me of what happened to me before. And St. Paul, I mean if I can't make St. Paul as well, but it's it's it has the lady say to think because you're um tired and fatigued and not hoping that it's not working. That itself is a lie of the enemy. I keep going. Okay, let's see. What is the Catechism of the Catholic Church? We'll answer you. Sister, yeah. In a Christian life, the Holy Spirit himself accomplishes his work by mobilizing the whole being of you and me. How? Driving away its, all its sorrows, fears, and sadness as is visible in the Lord's agony and passion. That means... Whenever you go through broken hearted, sadness, fear and sadness, if you and I help asking the Holy Spirit to cooperate, when we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, he helps us to displace, mobilize this. Why? Christ has already endured. You and I need not endure that. It's my choice. And that's why he said, in Christ, you are ah, in in Christ, human feelings are able to reach their consummation in charity and divine beatitude. But just to get up again and then go again and uh-huh. So when you the more you and I are able to work with unison with the Holy Spirit, these human feelings of brokenness, rejection, dejection are able to reach their consummation in charity with the divine beatitude. We might go into human emotions a small bit, but don't give it to too much because the enemy will distract you. Like a natural, it's like a natural um, tears that come in the situation. And they they don't give them um, faith in my power. When I refuse to get into that fear, fear, sorrow, sadness, rejection, dejection, that in itself you are in unison with the Holy Spirit, and He is mobilizing those negative emotions away from you, making you to be reaching our consummation in charity with divine. Nature, beatitude. Praise the Lord. Any questions? It's to say there, uh, gee, I, I, I would have heard all this before and I went on the way to raise, but then, then to fade away from it. And, 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 so. Why are we fading away? Oh, no, I won't say that way. The more you hear the truth, but at the same time, the more you hear the truth is one side, but into application side has to be the other side. Knowledge is good, but knowledge on its own is, doesn't do any good until it is practically implemented. If I have the theory knowledge of how to give an injection, it doesn't do any good to anybody. Until or unless I'm able to perform that skill. Praise the Lord. Any questions in the YouTube or Zoom, sister? No, but uh, no questions in Zoom or YouTube. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mary, will you be able to do a Thanksgiving prayer, Mary, please?
Yes, Amal. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus. Um, Heavenly Father, I praise you and I thank you. Jesus, I praise you and I thank you. Holy Spirit, I adore you. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for this beautiful teaching and uh, for making us to study uh, the life of Moses, Joseph, and even the boy with the, that gave the loaves and the fishes into Jesus' hands. And how... Um, how the Lord, how their broken brokenness was turned into a blessing for the lives of many and many, and even us now studying um, these their lives, uh, we can learn from them and through the power of the Holy Spirit, learn to put all we have learned into practice in our daily life. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen and amen. Thank amen, you, amen, amen, amen. Amen. So next week we will have it. We are we'll be having having it in the evening at eight o'clock. Evening, eight p.m. Dublin time. All right. Thank you. Have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, brother. You too. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Praise Jesus.